Hi, I'm Steve. And I'm Sandy. And we're two Tenderfoot tourists. Welcome to episode 109, Panama City Beach, Florida. Every day is a new day. Let's run, 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 run. Today on Two Tenderfoot Tourists, we're telling you all about the beach, sea life, boating, and an oceanside Thanksgiving. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on another episode of Two Tenderfoot Tourists. Today, as the title says, we're going to be talking about Panama City Beach, Florida. First time there. I've been there, but it was when I was really young, so I don't remember it. So it may as well be the first time. Might as well be. <laughs> yeah. So like last year, we stayed in, uh, was it Orange Beach or Gulf Shores? I guess it really doesn't matter. Which I think one. it was Orange Beach still, okay. but I'm not positive. And we rented a condo. Right, with our friends, our friends Sean and Jen. And then mm. we, of course, had Kyle and Alyssa there and Haley. This year, Ashley and Olivia didn't get to make it. No. But it was still a great time. It was a very good time. In fact, uh, we spent a few months, me and Sean, just looking over condos trying to find a place to stay down there for Thanksgiving weekend. And, uh, oh, yeah, we were determined to be on the beach, too, especially this time of year because it's cheaper mm-hmm. and it's easier to find a place. Yeah, and the other the stipulation was is that we'd have enough king-size beds for everyone there. Right, because there were three couples. Yes, and so we hit the nail on the head. Yeah, you'd be really surprised um, to, to see how many places have lots of beds, but they're twin beds. Yeah, I was like, really okay, shocked. By that. If we're a bunch of college students, that's one thing, but this is couples. <laughs> I don't want to sleep in a twin bed. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you anyway. Well, and one of the things that uh, appealed us to this place, which, by the way, the, the name of the condo was Splash Beach Resort, and it's it was in um, Actually, yeah, it was Laguna say, Beach. Yeah, it was just a little bit north of Panama City Beach. Okay, just outside in Laguna Beach. Yeah, it was a really pretty area. It really, really was the um, one of the things that attracted us to this this room in particular was the fact that it had three separate bathrooms, right? That all couples could had 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 access to it. Full. Well, I should say um, two of the bathrooms were specific to rooms. Right. Um, The other bathroom was the main bathroom, so it was open to everyone. But that was still right across from Kyle and Melissa's room, so it was very convenient for them. It was very convenient for them, and also everybody had their own balcony. Yes. Um, and it all faced the ocean. We shared ours with Haley because <laughs> yes. she slept on the couch in the living room, which was a pullout, but she chose not to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she just decided to sleep on the couch, which, you know what, it, I'm kind of glad she did it that it's way. It's a lot less work. It is. And if she was willing to do that, I wasn't going to argue with her. Um, but I thought it was sweet that and she And it helps that, that she sleeps like the dad, so we could walk around and make oh coffee or gosh. whatever we need to, and she never knew a thing. A freight train could go through the room and it it's wouldn't It's kind of disturbing. Her up. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could sleep that well, then... Anyway, so, uh, yeah, I mean, there was a lot, it checked a lot of boxes for us yes, when it, it comes to the actual, I mean, just from, from looking at it on the internet. Well, r- for, first of all, um, we had that huge balcony mm-hmm. and it opened from our room and, and also, also the from room. the living room, but it directly faced the beach. And what a view. It was amazing. If you guys looked at the Insta- our Instagram or our Facebook page, you can see all those. Sandy took all those pictures. She did an amazing job taking all those pictures of the beach and the sunset and the sunrise and everything else. It's my thing. It's your thing. I still got more that I need to post, but I thought I'd put them in once in a while. Right. Um, but then we had the balcony from Kyle and Alyssa's room. Yes. It was over on the side, but they could still see the beach also. It's just set back a little further. And the same goes for Sean and Jen in their room as well. And what was really great about Sean and Jen's room is it was set back even further. Mm -hmm. So it was like staggered. And it put the kitchen between Kyle and Alyssa's room and the living room and then Sean and Jen were even on the other side of Kyle and Alyssa's room. Which was really, tell them the reason why that really worked out well for us. Well, too. Jen likes to go to bed early and she likes to get up early and read mm-hmm. and study. So 
it worked out really well because she was totally separated from all of us. Her personal private balcony where it was nice and quiet Mm -hmm. and do her reading. Worked out great. It was great. It was perfect. And the weather was nice while we were there, too, which was awesome. Which was really very well. Uh, You know, and being in November, you never know what to expect, really. I mean... Sometimes when you go into these tropical areas, you get more rain than you do sunshine sometimes. That's the way it works. Sometimes. Well, I think last year down at Orange Beach and Gulf Shores area, it was like a high of 50. Yeah. <laughs> we froze. We couldn't go in the water, although a couple of the crazies did. And um, Steve and I were like, uh, nah. nah. <laughs> so was Jen and Olivia. They were smart, too. But this year, it stayed in the 70s other than early morning and late evening. It was perfect. Mm-hmm. It couldn't have been better, I don't think, for that time of year. No, I don't think so either. In fact, um, uh, it was it was not only the weather was excellent at that time of year, but also the the tourists were minimum. The beaches were it's, not it's crowded true. at all. Right, they're exactly like I like them. <laughs> oh yeah, I had ac- we had access to like virtually the whole entire beach, and I mean you'd walk. I mean you can see other people on it, but there the the separation of the people that were enjoying the beach were so far apart that it really didn't matter. Right. So this time of year it was a really good. Plus you get like uh, the one of the pros of getting a condo down there in Panama City beaches uh, during the winter time or the fall. It actually it uh it's more affordable right and, and you get the nice weather to go on top that's one of the things i was going to say that a person who is going with a large group mm-hmm. if you can stand those people enough to share a house with them mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's good i, I mean it nice is little what caveat it is. there it is what it is right <laughs> it's just like i can't stand you but <laughs> get a condo because a condo it's set up with dishes. It's got an oven, a stove, and a that was another part about this and place usually too, yeah. a dishwasher. Mm-hmm. We'll get there. Um, yeah, that's in our pro our cons, our cons list. Yes. But I mean, it, it it has everything you need in a household. Right. I mean, they provide like I think one roll of toilet paper paper for every room, mm-hmm. and then um, a roll of paper towels. Right. Anything past that, you have to have. So we brought extras of stuff like that. But yeah. otherwise, they pretty much provided everything. It was nice. It was really nice. Yeah. Okay, it was very affordable if you're in a group. And seeing how we had like three bedrooms that had uh, that uh, accommodated adults, you know, married adults and everything like that, that was perfect. Right. And a lot of times the security is better at condos. Um, and they'll have security walking around on the premises sometimes. I've noticed that with both of them, that right. they had that, and that was really good. So now um, we told you all the pros about this place, it, it, the convenience of it all as far as like what it uh, gave to us as far as uh, accommodations, uh, the closeness to the water because it was ac- beach ass access. Now if you have children, you have a water park in the bottom floor. That right, was nice. Right, the swimming pool and the play area, which mm-hmm. we wanted to play on and take pictures, but they said 14 in that, 14 in and under yeah but anyway some of us act like we're lower than 14 (laughs) but um the 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 of course the view Mm -hmm. was one of them we mentioned and just the setup of the condo itself it was a great floor plan it was it was a very good floor plan floor floor plan floor plan (laughs) you said it right that time you were just acting weird (laughs) floor it was just, it was a great floor plan. And that was one of the things that appealed to us. It plus it had all the conveniences of dishwasher, washing machine, refrigerator, oven, stovetop. Yep. Uh, uh, silverware dishes and three all different that. showers, three different showers. I mean, all that was just like icing on the cake. It was oh, perfect. Yeah. And so the let, price. I want you to tell them now the cons. Okay. So the cons, when we first arrived there, it was a little difficult for us to figure out where exactly we were to park. Uh, it took us a minute or two to try to figure that out. And then when we finally figured it out, it was a parking garage across the street on beach drive or beach road or whatever you call it. And, um, then the times for us to get checked in, uh, noon to four, noon to four. That's and, your only time you could check in. And I'm like, okay, that's weird. But they give us a, a code. That was the other thing I kind of like the back onto the pro. Oh yeah. That is a you pro. You didn't have a key card, but you had a code you punched into the door in order to have access. Right. So when you went down to swim at the ocean, you didn't have to take your key card with you. That's a plus. Um, you didn't have to worry about losing it or somebody stealing it. Um, but back to our cons. Yeah. Back to our cons. Um, not being able to check in, but because we didn't get there till 430 was a big con because then we were afraid our car was going to get towed because yeah. you're supposed to put something in the window from them showing you were checked in and you're supposed to be there. 
So we were a little worried about that. Yeah, but yeah, we were concerned for the first night that that might happen. But we talked to the security guard who was very helpful. And he said that uh, you have three strikes and you're out. Basically, they put a little ticket in your window. Right. So basically, they give you a warning. Yeah, it's a warning at all. It's not like you have to pay a fine or something. It's just, hey, warning, you, you your car stays here. It's going to get towed. So you do have ample warning and ample time to get to it. But for people who are new to the place, it was a little... Uh, it had us a little concerned. Right. So that's a con. Um, the other thing is, as you can tell, the exterior of the building and the interior was going through some sort of renovation. They had uh, painter, uh, window washer. Uh, what do you call them? Those? They had scaffolding. Sca- thank you. Scaffolding on the outside. And uh, and a lot of the things that we would could have enjoyed, like the Lazy River, was shut down. Um, and they and were, there were a few things that were just in disrepair. And there was a few things that are in disrepair. Our our condo room itself it specifically had some some mechanical issues. Like for instance, our dishwasher did not work. Right, and there were a few cleanliness issues. Yes. Um, an example of that was there was this huge jet tub in our bathroom. I'm glad you're mentioning and that. And I would have totally used that, but we looked down in it and it was dirty. Yeah. What it looked like is as if um, they filled it with water or they poured a uh, their ice chest in there or something like that, and they had a little bit of sand or dirt or whatever it may be. And just left it there. And just left it there, and it just kind of evaporated in the floor of the, the tub. Now, that being said, it was still a really good place to be. It was really affordable, and it was really – it. we didn't feel like our lives were in threat or being threatened, oh, no. nor our health. Mm-hmm. So um, their pool was nice and heated. That was nice. And it was pretty. And we, it was And was again, nice. there's pictures of that also on there. And you can tell we feel like we're in a little tropical paradise down there. We really got the palm trees with the sun setting yeah. in the background and in the pool and, and stuff like that. And it's a covered that. swimming pool, too. So yes. if, if it would have been swimming, uh, swimming, if it would have been raining, they could have still swam in the pool and it yep. would have been nice. It would have been still nice. So, But, I mean... Those pros and, and compared to the pros and cons, those cons, you know, set those aside, you know. The pros outweigh the cons. Yeah, they really do. I mean, it. would we recommend this place? Yes, if you're willing to deal with the cons. Right. If you're going to be sensitive about the cons, I wouldn't recommend it. Because, I mean, like the dishwasher not working, that was an inconvenience. It was. Oh, and, and if you, if they, one of the things they ask you to do before you leave as a condition when you leave the, the condo is to make sure all the dishes are in the dishwasher and mm-hmm. they're clean. So we had to hand wash them and put them away. Yeah, we hand washed them and put them away. Yeah. So that was one of the things we had to deal with. Um, but again, I kind of like condo life better than hotel life. Amen to that, sister. I wish we could do that with your points. Uh, well, actually, you can. They just require a lot more points. That's so, all. like I said, I wish we could do that with your points. <laughs> good not, point, good point. I'm too cheap for you to get rid of all your points just so I can be in a condo. <laughs> oh, I know, right? That'd be nice. But, okay, so, yeah, um, Splash, what was, the, what was it called? Splash, Splash, Splash Harbor? Splash? No, no, I don't know. Splash Beach Resort and Waterslide Park Hotel Condo. In? It's Panama. Oh, Laguna Beach, just outside of Panama City Beach, Florida. And the, it, it, I was, I was pleased with our stay there. Um, I would, I would like it if uh, they had the same sort of thing at that same price, same price in Gulf Shores. I would too, because I, I do love Gulf Shores. Mm-hmm. So all the way there, and while we were there, all we had to do is turn to Kyle and say, "Hey, Kyle, where are we going?" Or, "Hey, hey, Kyle, where are we?" And he'd go, "Panama." Panama, Panama, Panama. Am I keeping this in the podcast? Yes, you are. And oh my. it was so funny because every time we'd get him to do that, Alyssa would slap him. <laughs> Stop it. It was worth it. <laughs> it was he worth would say. it. It was so funny. Uh, but, okay, so the reason why we went down there is because, one, we enjoy the company of, of our like, our friends, the Greaves. Your friends, the Greaves. We've known them for 15 years. They were family before our kids married each other. That is true. And um, so they suggested that we go down to Panama City Beach and have our Thanksgiving dinner there. So we went on this great search of a restaurant that we could go to and eat at for Thanksgiving. We were looking we for had, a buffet, weren't we, we? Well, we weren't looking for a buffet. We were looking for a restaurant we could go to. But when we were researching, we found that all of them that were open offered a buffet. Mm-hmm. And it was smart of them. Then there wasn't a bunch of different dishes to cook on Thanksgiving. They just had these main dishes that they put out. But 
we ended up um, finally narrowing in on one, and we actually made reservations before we ever left for Panama City. Yeah, I was going to say, if you have any plans on going down, like doing what we did and go down to Panama City Beach for your Thanksgiving uh, holiday, uh, definitely call in advance. Every time I've called someone and we're debating if whether or not we wanted to take part in that, uh, that Thanksgiving buffet meal. Thanksgiving meal, they said, well, you need to act quick because our reservations are filling quick. Yep. And you need to remember that. So if you decide to do it over Christmas or something, you need to be calling and making your plans if you're not going to cook for yourself. Right. And, you know, the other thing is it doesn't cost you anything. They didn't ask for any kind of oh, deposit. for a reservation. For yeah. a reservation. Just put their name down. And you get in a lot quicker. You can even tell them, like, where we went. Which, we had a certain time we reserved for. Yeah, we, we reserved it for a specific time, and we can even reserve it for a different location because you could be um, covered outside, uh, uncovered outside, or facing the beach. You could be inside, you know, the building. It right. just depends on your preference, if you so will. So we were outside but covered. Yes, and that was perfect. It was. It was beautiful. Um, and the name of the place was Sharky's. Yes. And it was really neat. The, the service was excellent. Yes. I'm still ticked off because we forgot that there was another table. <laughs> okay, yeah. And okay. we missed the prime rib. All right, so when we, you can ask the, the person before you do your reservation there, what exactly is going to be on the buffet? And they had just about <laughs> everything. And They had turkey and they had turkey, and ham, potatoes and ham. The, the like traditional normal. Thanksgiving meals. But then they had like three different kinds of fish. They had um, shrimp. Sh- yeah, fried shrimp. Uh, a fried cod, a deep fried oh, cod. They had the best crab cakes I've ever had in oh my, my gosh, life. I couldn't eat enough of those. If I would have known those were going to be so good, I probably would have eaten those and not any of the fish. I know. Those were so good. <laughs> you and Sean and I were like making ourselves sick well, on Sean them. kept on wanting me to go back up there and grab like a plate full and then have you put the rest of them in your purse. I know. And I wasn't going to do that. And I'm that. like, I'm not doing that to Sandy. That's stinky. That is stinky. Plus, they wouldn't taste as good warmed up. That's what I ca- I told them. I go, you really think these are going to really do well <laughs> after you microwave them? But yeah, they had another table that had the prime rib on it and had a, what was it? Alligator sausage shrimp pasta. Y- yeah. And they and had that separated it. it from the regular buffet. It was over in another area. And I'm and like, we missed it. Why did we? I can't believe we missed that. I was so disappointed. Yeah, but the meal was exceptional. It really was. It um, was. I think we paid like twenty seven dollars a person. It was. And if you wanted like crab legs, ex, that cost extra four dollars. Yeah, an extra four dollars for all you can eat crab legs. Mm-hmm. And um, also coming with that buffet was dessert, and they had like pecan pie, apple pie, or apple cobbler. Pumpkin. And then pumpkin pie. Right. And the cobbler was pretty good. No, the, the cobbler was pretty good. I would have liked a little dollop of ice cream on top. Uh, that makes it perfect. I'm from Missouri. I want ice cream. I want ice cream. But no, it was a wonderful time. We really enjoyed the food. Nobody complained. So, sh- Sharkies, we would highly recommend that yes. if you're going to go down there. I mean, any time of year. We even got t-shirts. Go we yeah. should take pictures of our t-shirts and we put them on there. We probably should. Now, we, Sharkies was not the only place that we ate at. We ate at Har- uh, Harry Harpoon. Harry's... Harpoon Harry's. Harpoon Harry's, yes. Harpoon like, Harry's. Now, they had really good food. That We had the, the shrimp... Uh, quesadillas. Qu- quesadilla, yeah, that's right. And they're huge. It's a huge quesadilla cut in like four pieces. Yeah. But it was more than we, we could have split that. We could have split it, yeah. Easy. It came with fries, didn't it? Yes. I think that's yes, right. Yes, it did. And um, it, it was really good. Um, we had quite a wait there. But, right. but when the food came, even Sean again said, once the food came, it was worth it. Yeah, that well, the wait was a little a little crazy long. It and was. we sat outside for that, too, but they had heaters set yes. in different places around there. That so. is something to be said. Whenever the night started to fall, it did get it a cold. little chilly. Wasn't cold like Missouri, but no. it got chilly. Yeah. No, I, I wore in the evening, I wore my uh, hoodie. Yeah, just jacket. a hoodie was good yeah. enough. Um, but those are the other, what's the other place we ate at? What's the place that we ate at where we pulled the boat up and docked it? Yeah, oh, um, Cajun Joe's. Is that what it's called? Cajun Joe's. That was some of the best food. The best place to eat. Okay. Now, I, Sean and I, we, we were determined to find a place that you pulled the boat up to and you, you, you docked and then you ate and you get back on your boat and you took, cause we decided we were going to rent a boat while we were there. To, to go around in the Bay Area. and We did the same thing last year. Yes, we did. And but last year we missed the opportunity to pull up and eat at a restaurant. Correct. And um, 
that was Pirate's Cove, which, by the way, we still to this day regret not eating at Pirate's yes, Cove. Yes, we do. Because that was the place that Jimmy Buffett got inspired for. Cheeseburger in G- Paradise. G- Thank you. I Dang, love I know you, you. love me. <laughs> um, but Cajun Joe's is, is, it's one of those places you have a lot of private docking that goes around. And there's only, if, if you go there, be sure to go there early in the morning because you will run out of space to park. Otherwise, you'll have to get in your car and drive all the way around yep. to the other side we of the bay. We barely got there in time to park. Once we were parked, all of a sudden, every other spot was full and there was nowhere to park. And this place is a hole in the wall. Yeah, it's a little shack on a flotation. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, on a dock. Um, but it was really good. First of all, the service was good. She was good. The way she came in, she loaned us ropes to tie yep. up our po- pontoon. She helped us get it done. Yeah. For some reason, the, the pontoon rental didn't have, bo- didn't have ropes. ropes for you to, I don't know. Um, but she helped us tie them up. She actually helped give us a hand out of the pontoon because we had to step up onto <laughs> the dock. And, um, she even helped Steve out and she was tiny, mm-hmm. um, but she was just great about it. She just said, don't forget to give me my ropes back. And but we didn't. They ended up seating us back on an area all alone, which we joked about it being because we were obnoxious. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but the place was great. The food was excellent. Sean, uh, our son, Kyle and I had all a, a, uh, what was it? A cheeseburger with um, shrimp and cheese. A shrimp and cheese, Cajun cheeseburger. Cajun shrimp and cheese cheeseburger. That's what it is. Anyway, highly recommend that. All of them, all three of them said it was like crack. It was really good. In fact, we still talk about it to this day. I had fish and chips, and it was like these chunks of cod. Oh, that was good. That were deep fried, and it was really good batter. It was it was delicious, and um, the fries were really good. The seasoning on them had mm-hmm. a little bit of a, a, a good seasoning, and I can't. I think the others just got shrimp baskets, right? Yeah, which I kind of regretted because I love shrimp baskets, and they're so, so good because the batter on the shrimp was thinner. It wasn't that real thick, heavy yep. batter. Yep. But all the food was good. All of it. was The good. service was good. They even played around with us a little bit. Now they they nice. they are recovering from a hurricane, so um, they are in the process of rebuilding. But their business is still open. They're still yep. functioning as a business. Now, when we pulled up to the dock, if you're a person who's not that limber, you may have difficulty climbing up out of the boat and get onto the actual. That is true. So that was just a fair warning, just to let you know. I don't know. Maybe by the time you get to it, after you take our recommendation. Um, they may have something simpler, simpler for you to climb. But I, an example is for me, I had to stand on the cooler and then step up onto the ladder, holding on to Sean with one hand mm-hmm. and holding on to her with the other hand, mm-hmm. and she helped pull me up. Right, because um, there wasn't a good way to do it. So you don't want to be climbing out of the boat if you can't physically right. handle climbing out of the exactly. boat. Exactly. So I, I had help. <laughs> you, you needed help. Yeah, yeah I I'm needed too, help. Well, f- first of all, I'm too short. Right. Everybody else got out of there without the cooler, but and I was I'm like, I fat. don't think I can get my leg up that high. <laughs> but, well, that does not help, and we're both that. Yeah. But, anywho. Anywho. So, Cajun Joe's, definitely worth it. It's right there on the bay. It's, uh, you just look it up. Panama City Beach. You can't miss it. If oh, all else fails, really ask good. the locals, and we've said this forever, because we ended up asking the guy at the pontoon place. Yes. We asked him where is a good place to eat off the... You know, mm-hmm. on the uh, bay, and he told us about that place. Yeah, and I'd already done research, and I found that place, and it just confirmed basically right. what we discovered already. So, so that was a good feeling. Now, as far as entertainment goes, we do highly recommend a place called Grand Maze and uh, Miniature Golf over there in Panama City Beach. Uh, and it, it's it's got like two different golf courses, and it's got a human size maze for you to what they change interchange the walls and yeah. stuff so it constantly stays the same it it was really fun or it stays different all the yeah, time yeah, it's they never make the it, same yeah it's never the same they make it different and um we went through it once yes um Alyssa and Haley and Sean and Jen have been through it before Yes. And they just were like, you have to do it. You have to. And we loved it. It was a lot of fun. Absolutely loved it. It's the cool thing is, is okay. So for what was it? $24 per person. You can have access for it for 24 hours. So if like, let's say you get there at five o'clock at night and you pay the enough access, uh, pay the $25 to to have access to the two golf miniature golf and the maze. Mm -hmm. You have it from five o'clock, 24, 24 hours after that, as long as they're five o'clock the next day. When we got there, we played one round of golf, yeah. which climbs, by the way. It's yeah. not level. It climbs all over the place, and mm-hmm. it makes it so much more interesting. 
And then we went over and did the maze. And then we went back the next day. Right. And we did mini golf again. I thought for sure we were going to do the maze again, but everybody wanted to go back to the beach. Everybody was wanting to go back to the beach, and I did too, for sure. I was really excited. But about that. the thing is, is you get a you get a ticket before you go into the maze, and you you yes. get a time stamp, and then you run the maze, and then in the maze there's like these four different gazebo on stilts, if you will. Yeah, they're towers. The towers. Thank you. And you go in there, and you you you. You punch. You punch. Thank yeah. you. You punch there, little. Yeah, it's like a um, card. Oh, what kind? Of, dang it! I was wanting to name even one of them. Oh, Tahiti is yes, one. Yes, they represent different islands. Uh, Tahiti, uh, Bahama, Fuji, Fuji, and yeah. there's uh, I can't remember the. the so, last one. Um, so we would have to find our way to each tower and punch our card to prove we found our way to those towers. Right. And then you would go back and try to find your way out. And then you stamp your your card again, and it tell you how we did ours in thirty minutes. Was it twenty nine? Like twenty nine, yeah. Twenty nine, yeah. Um, and I don't know what Sean and Jen got, but I know the they kids were, got like twenty. Yeah, they were like at nineteen something. The kids. Yeah, and Sean and Jen were like twenty seven or twenty six. Yeah, they weren't far ahead of us. Maybe, uh-huh. maybe four maybe. or five minutes. So, so I didn't feel too bad. So I, uh, so make a long story short, if you if you got a competitive spirit or you just like getting lost a little bit in a maze, this is a great place to go. It, I think it's reasonably priced, especially for what they give you. Now you can pay like eighteen dollars per course or twelve dollars per course or something like that. When it really breaks down to it, twenty five dollars for each person for like twenty four hours period to have access to it is a great deal i think it was a smart way to go and the music they played was awesome while you're there i mean if you like like a little bit of christmas and a little jazzy stuff and mm-hmm. a little old-fashioned big band music and stuff like that it's really nice it was a little bit of a mishmash but it was a lot of older stuff and we it, enjoyed it yeah we like that stuff so um now as far as the ocean goes I I got over a little bit of a fear of mine. I was so proud of him. Okay, um, anybody who listens to our podcast regularly, regularly, regularly. <laughs> they know that Steve has a fear of water. A lot of paranoia, actually. That back when we went on our cruise in May, um, while we were in Cozumel, he kind of tried to cut loose a little bit and get past that. He learned to float. Snorkeling. And, and he snorkeled, yes. And that was so cool. And I was so excited and proud of him back then. Well, <laughs> that just this this vacation blew that one out of the water as far as his water time. <laughs> <laughs> water time. I know, it just hit me out water of the time. water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anywho, um, he actually went way out in the water and the waves were slamming against the back of his head, over his head, the whole bit, and he had blast. I did. I did have a lot of fun. In fact, um, w- one of the things that scared me the most about going out in the water, there's several things that fear I, I fear. is What's in the water? <laughs> yeah, what is in the water? Can it eat me? Um, and then second of all, drowning. That is like, you know, those are my two most high fears, you know, the paramount of my fear right there. And then um, the the... You go out into the water, it, they had a yellow flag out, right? But when we first got there, they had a red flag. Right. So the undertow was a little too much for they giving people don't go swimming because the right. undertow is too much. But when they changed it to yellow, we went out and the waves seriously went right over our heads and they were breaking uh, out against uh, away from the shore fairly far so we had to walk out that's what i loved about this you, you could, could walk forever and not you, be deep yeah we walked out probably a good 200 yards or more and and the we it was still going like just about mid chest my shoulders and then when the wave came in sean when and Kyle, my son, was all teaching me, like, it's like when the wave comes in, just jump and go with it. Well, sometimes that didn't work. And, and I said, I'm getting drowned here like that. And they said, well, if that ever happens, if you fear water, like I fear water, pinch your nose, go under, let the wave go over your head. That's <laughs> what I ended up doing. But, I mean, I tried not to think about what could eat me and and just just simply go out there and try to enjoy myself. That being said... I was trying to make it out to you because I was trying to get my nerve up to go out in the deep part. Because I get you were a, doing good. I get a little afraid when the water goes over my head. So mm-hmm. so I chickened out a little bit. But on the way out there, mm-hmm. I stepped and something wriggled from out from under <laughs> my foot. Yeah, I immediately jerked sideways and like, oh my gosh, you know. So I was a little freaked out, but I wasn't <laughs> afraid. But it it was startling. It was enough to make you freak. I am not kidding. I no more set my foot back down and something soft just brushed against my leg. 
Yes. I'm pretty sure I know what that was, and we'll talk about that too. What did you swim with when you were out there, Steve? Stingrays. They were everywhere. They were everywhere. Um, I didn't realize they were out there with you guys, and I don't think you did at first either. And no. then all of a sudden, they're jumping out of the water all around you guys. Yeah, we had them playing in the waves, like no more than about 20, 20 feet from us. But yeah, all those stingrays swimming around were amazing. And I got some pictures and video footage, if anybody wants to see that, from our 60th floor balcony. You could see, I didn't get footage of you playing with them. No. Or them would... swimming around you, I should say. Yeah. But I did get pictures of them swimming from above. And I'm telling you, unless you are above them, you can't tell they're there until they're right there. Yeah. Um, we saw several people when we were filming from above walking past them in the water and had no clue they were next to them. Not a clue. So it's kind of cool. I love that. I... I... I told Sean I, I didn't want to leave just because of, you know, the, the water. I, I can see why people enjoy the water as much as they do. Mm-hmm. Um, I even tried to do the boogie board for <laughs> a little bit. funny. <laughs> and I drowned myself like two or three times. Um, you know, I like I like the fact that I do now have an appreciation for the ocean like this. I always I have had an appreciation for the just for the sound, the 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 the, the, the beauty peacefulness, of it. the mm-hmm. beauty of it all. But now um it, it is it's just amazing. I can see why people like to play in it now. Well, my family all thinks I have a strange obsession with wildlife. <laughs> uh, mostly around here of course, it's the wild turkey. Yeah. But um they <laughs> The big thing for me when I go to the coast or to the Gulf um, is I want to see something in the wild. I always tell you that. I just want to see something alive out here. I don't Mm -hmm. care what it is. I just want to see something. Usually we'll see like a turtle or we'll see a... um, some kind of fish swim by or something. Or we always see pelicans and seagulls, of course. But um, when we went out on the pier, Kyle and Alyssa saw a small shark. Oh, yeah. Um, we of course mentioned that we saw the stingrays and then Steve and I one morning saw about six different dolphins also swimming out there with the stingrays. So Mm -hmm. that was kind of cool. That was kind of cool. Oh, you know what we need to mention? What? Uh, uh, (laughs) Pure Park. Um, oh yeah. Pure Park. Yeah. That place was interesting. We didn't get to tour it like we would like to, Yeah, but we got to see what was there. It was, it was really cool. So if you guys have listened to our Myrtle Beach podcast if you've been around long enough to hear that one um the they had something called uh sky wheel there in myrtle beach well they also had one there at pier park the exact same model they had the glass bottom the whole nine yards and it's like i kind of would like to ride that one again um i think that would have been really neat it would have been neat the only thing is i think i would have liked the one in myrtle better because it was right on the beach yeah. It was literally right there where it, when you're up in there at certain angles, you see beach. Right. Where this one was over in um, Pier Park, which is like a big shopping center mm-hmm. area. And so, restaurants. Yes. Yeah, so it wouldn't be quite as cool. But when you're up high, I'm sure you'd see a great view. I'm sh- Yes, I guarantee it. You know, um, all right, uh, Sandy, another great episode under our belt. I hope everybody found it just as informative as we had fun living it oh yeah (laughs) you're so funny well thank you for listening to episode 109 panama city beach florida two tenderfoot tourist is a family-friendly podcast if you like what you hear be sure to subscribe on apple podcast podbean google play stitcher tune in and spotify just to name a few to get in touch with us and chat about this podcast or even your travel experiences simply email us at tenderfoottourist at gmail.com or follow us on facebook and instagram and don't forget to check out our website at two tenderfoottourist.com that's t-w-o tenderfoottourist.com and keep those suggestions coming and maybe uh, and and Uh uh-huh Keep those suggestions coming, and maybe you'll give us our best episode of 2019. It's coming to a close, though, right now. I know, right? Maybe too late for people. Maybe I should start saying 2020. No. Okay. (laughs) Oh, I'm Steve. And I'm Sandy. Until next time. Stay tender.